it looks like I've got, you know, a tumor or something sticking out the side of my head. OTT upgrades and some big changes coming to my YouTube channel I think you should know about. And welcome to yet another episode of Crown and Comments with your host and resident gold wing guru, the one, the only, Cruise Man. Brought to you by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Videos. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments, March 2024. Maybe you thought we were going to do one this month, but you're wrong. I know it's a little late in the month, but I've been pretty busy. We'll get into that here in a minute. I want to catch you up on some old news and a few updates of stuff that's going on around here. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the show. If you're new to the channel, you're new to this show. I do this about once a month. I like to get together with everybody and just kind of in a very relaxed environment. Uh, the crown in comments refers to my crown royal, my favorite adult beverage. Now, remember, it's only about 3.30 in the afternoon here when I shoot this show. And it's uh, haven't had anything to eat all day long because I don't eat breakfast. The only time I eat breakfast is on Sunday mornings when I meet with my friends. Sunday is kind of my cheat day, you might say. I pretty much eat anything I want on Sundays, but the rest of the time... I'm pretty strict. I'm doing this carnivore thing, and I'll tell you at some point in the future how I think that's working out. But anyway, not that anybody cares. But I do this about once a month, get together, and I go through some of the comments on my YouTube channel, Facebook, emails, that I think are worthy of a response on the show. I, I respond to a lot of people online. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over some of that, but I like to also catch you up on some of this stuff going on around my YouTube channel uh, and just around motorcycling in general. And sometimes this has nothing to do with motorcycling. I am going to continue my rant a little bit from last month where I went on about the inflation. And uh, I've, you know, some more stuff is has come to light. I got a lot of comments from you on that, and I'm just going to, you know, because it's not getting any better, and some of you made some comments, you sent me some messages, and I think I, I need to respond to that. We'll get into that later on. First, I want to talk a little bit about these OTT upgrades. For those of you that are familiar with my Goldwing maintenance video series, I recently moved to a new platform. Uh, we were using Vimeo On Demand. You can still use that if you've purchased the videos. You can still access the videos like you always have. But you do have the option of upgrading to this newer platform. It has a nice search feature, has a better interface. I think it's just a nicer, cleaner look. We have a forum where we answer people's questions about maintenance-related issues. So uh, just real quick, I've had a lot of, uh, we've had hundreds of people that have done the upgrade, obviously, but some of you still haven't. And I, I've been getting some messages from some of you saying that uh, you've sent me your uh, proof of purchase and you never received a response. And I went back and looked through some of my records and I show that I've sent the emails, I've sent the responses. So I would invite you to make sure you check your spam folder on your email account. Make sure it's not going into spam. You might be getting my reply and just it's, it's just not showing up in your email. So check that. Uh, real quick update on the new podcast series, Garage Talk. Uh, I launched that since our last Crown and Comments. And I think it's been a pretty good success. I have done three episodes so far. The fourth one is already recorded. It's in editing right now. It probably won't go up on the channel. I don't know, maybe in another 10 days, two weeks. When I launched these podcasts, I wanted to come out of the gate with a few you know, in a, in a, in re relatively in a, in a, in re relatively in a, in a, in re relatively rapid series. I didn't want you to have to wait a month for the second episode, so I went ahead and put the first three out in a span of about three weeks, three and a half weeks, 
and uh, they've done very well. My first one was with uh, Alex with Break Free, Alex Archangelski. He's one of the co-founders and uh, of Break Free Technologies. And that was a very good interview. And by the way, you can still get those Break Free helmet lights, which I'm a super big believer in. You can still get those $10 off. They're, I'm sorry, $20 off. They were $169. Now they're $149. But you can save another $10 if you use promo code CRUISEMAN, all uppercase. Or you can go to the special link that I have in the description down below. Now, some of you have said that if you use my link to go to Break Free, uh, it only is giving you the option to purchase the black unit. They, they make this in a black and a white model. And if that happens to you, not only a couple of people have said this has happened to them, but if it does happen to you, just simply go to Break Free Technologies and you can still use promo code CRUISEMAN to save the, 10, uh, the $10, additional $10, at checkout. So you don't have to use the link that I put in the description of this video. The second podcast was with Kyle Downey. He's the Director of Operations and at Southern Honda there in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Largest Honda Goldwing seller in the United States and maybe the world. If you have not seen that interview, please watch it. If you're in the market for a Honda Goldwing, or if you're thinking about trading to a newer Goldwing, or if you are uh, looking to buy any Honda motorcycle, you need to check with Southern Honda Power Sports because uh, he had a very compelling story, and you definitely want to watch that podcast. And my last podcast, which I was super excited was with Kristen and Eddie from Bond Armor. They are the owners of Bond Body Armor, and I have been a big fan of Bond Body Armor for many, many years. And we, I reviewed their products four or five years ago, and they have continued to add new products. Many of you out there use Bond Armor products. Make sure you check out that podcast. They have very interesting story, great product, great company, great people. Make sure you check all that out. Now, this is not something sticking out of my head. This is my podcast microphone back there. I just happened to notice in the monitor, it looks like I've got, you know, a tumor or something sticking out the side of my head, but that's not. It's, let me move that thing. It looks a little distracting. Well, I'll just put that on the ground. I thought it would make a nice prop, but I think it's more distracting than anything. Okay, now we're back to a normal studio. Okay, first of all, I want to ask you guys, what do you think of the podcasts? Have you been watching them? Do you find them interesting? What do you think of the format? What do you think of the editing? What do you think of the production quality? Oh, we did have a few little video issues with Kristen and Eddie's uh, video on the last podcast. Uh, the next one that I'll be rolling out, we don't have that issue. I don't think it was on our end. It might have been on their end. Not sure what caused it. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so anyway, that's a little bit of an update on the podcast. There are more episodes coming. I've got some other guests lined up uh, to be interviewed on the podcast. So I'm very excited about that. And if any of you have any ideas of people that you would like to hear from, that you'd like me to interview, any questions you want me to ask them about, Put in the comments down below, and remember, you can make Crown and Comments a real success on YouTube. You can really help this show out just by liking this video, clicking that little thumbs up, that little like button. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Now, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and nobody's going to hassle you if you click that little notification bell. All it does is let YouTube know that you want to be informed that whenever you go back to YouTube, you want to know if we have any new videos. That's all it is. It's not like they're going to send you an email or harass you or anything like that. Make sure you subscribe, click that little notification bell, and like and share this video with your other motorcycle buddies or any of your other people. We don't care if they ride a motorcycle or not. I, anybody who watches the show, it's a good thing for me. Okay. So, uh, garage sale update. I have notes here, by the way, in case you didn't know. I always make some notes, a little outline of what I'm going to talk about. 
I can talk and ramble for an hour and a half and you guys be asleep if you're especially if you're having an adult beverage. By the way, you don't have to watch this show. You don't have to drink Crown Royal. You don't have to even have to drink an alcoholic beverage. You could have tea, coffee, water, Coke, whatever you want. By Coke, I mean Coca-Cola. I guess you could have the other Coke too. I don't know. Uh, update on the merchandise. Uh, merchandise sales have just been through the roof. Uh, we do still have the the ten dollar off. I'm sorry, ten percent off coupon. Sixty K subs coupon code is still active. It's only going to be active for maybe another ten days. I'm not sure how long that's going to stay active. So if you're interested in any of the merchandise, like this cap that I'm wearing, the shadow wing cap. Uh, I have the Shadow Wing polo shirt. We also have Shadow Wing t-shirts. We have the polo shirt and the cap now with blue embroidery or red embroidery. So if you have a red gold wing or a blue gold wing, we have, you know, the embroidery to match. This is kind of a, a gray color. These things are very popular. The new coming and going shirt that I introduced back when I did my 60K subs video, that shirt is literally flying off the shelves. Those things are unbelievable. Everybody's getting the coming and going t-shirts. That is the update on all the old news. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you about some changes coming to the YouTube channel. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments. March 2024, I'm Cruise Man. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some upcoming changes to my YouTube channel. And this actually comes from a video, a YouTube video that I saw yesterday or day before yesterday. And I watched this. It's, it has nothing to do with motorcycling. This channel is one of the cruise channels that I follow because, you know, we have a cruise channel as well. And he was talking about how he's making changes to his channel to but based on YouTube analytics to get more traffic, get more subscribers, more people watching his videos. But I watched him talk about some things and how it pertains to thumbnails and the titles of videos and how certain types of thumbnails seem to get more attention on YouTube. I don't know if it changes the algorithm and causes them to to show the videos to more people. Because basically what happens is when we come out, when I put out a new video, YouTube automatically makes you aware of it if you're a subscriber. They'll notify you that a new video is out. But if you're not a subscriber, you may also get notified based on the content of the video, based on certain keywords, based on how many people like the video how many people comment on the video. That's why we always keep saying, please like the video, because it really makes a big difference in the algorithm. OK, the other thing that makes a big difference is the thumbnails of the videos. And I did I went back and I looked at some analytics and I looked at some statistics on some of the videos that I've posted. And I noticed something funny. It was very similar to what this guy was saying happened on his cruise channel. The videos where me, where I am in the thumbnail of the video, for some reason, do better. They get more traffic. They get more views. Don't ask me why. I'm just saying that seems to be the case. If I just have a picture of a motorcycle or of a, of a part or of my logo or something like that, yeah, sometimes it does okay. But the ones where... I have pictures of me. And sometimes it's one of these pictures like, you know, where I'm shocked that I'm looking at something and I put something, I don't want to say clickbaity, but some something in the topic of the thumbnail that draws attention. Let's put it that way. So, and you'll see based on the thumbnail that I put on this video, you'll kind of get an, a, an example of what I'm talking about. But apparently, when people are skimming through videos to watch, they see that and they psychologically, they respond to it. I don't know. I don't get it. So if you see a lot of my thumbnails coming up with me going in the video or in the thumbnail, now you'll know why. The content's going to be the same. You know, I'm going to do the same 
some would say, lousy content that I always produce. That's not going to get any better or any worse. If you see that and that triggers you or annoys you, I apologize. That's just what we have to do now to survive on YouTube and to get more views and to hopefully grow the channel because there's some motorcycle channels out there, motorcycle themed channels that have 100,000 or 200,000 subscribers. There's no reason why this channel shouldn't have 100,000 subscribers. And as I've told you in the past, I expected to already have 100,000 subscribers by now and uh, am a little disappointed that I haven't reached that goal. Now, there's no money in it. It's purely ego. I'd like to be able to have that YouTube plaque hanging on the wall. So that's why I keep saying you guys can help me do that if you care. If you don't, that's okay. Always hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Did you know that 70% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribers? So there's a huge market right there of people that we could, if we can just get people to click. And I think, I think people resist subscribing because they're afraid they're going to be on a list. They're afraid they're going to get bothered by YouTube, that somebody's going to harass them with a bunch of emails and spam and all that. That does not happen. So you can always unsubscribe. If you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. So anyway. That's the changes coming to the channel. Uh, more podcasts are coming, so you'll be able to look forward to that. And cramming comments isn't going anywhere. We're going to continue to do that. I have a new a product review video that should be up in a couple of days. It's a product I reviewed in the past about four years ago. Even if you ride a trike, if you ride a Can-Am, it doesn't matter what brand. It really doesn't matter. You're going to want to watch this video. So that's a good reason right there to subscribe and click the notification bell because you'll want to know when that video comes out. I promise you, you will be surprised at <laughs> it. It's very cool. The product's even better than it was when I reviewed it four, four years ago or five years. I don't know when it was. It, was. it was a long time ago. So anyway, Okay, when we come back, I am going to rant a little more about inflation. So better get ready, turn, you know, put the kids away for a while because it could get really rough in here. I'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Crown and Comments, March 2024. As you probably have guessed by now, I am Cruise Man. And last month in Crown and Comments, I went on a rant, which I tend to do. I tend to do a rant every now and then. And I was ranting about inflation. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here in the corner of this video so you can go back and watch it because it's worth watching. Now, I went to the store a couple of days ago. I've been eating more eggs lately. And I went to the store. I do most of the shop. In fact, I do all the shopping. I do. I do. And I usually do it in my Goldwing. I take the Goldwing to the store and I put everything in the trunk, especially now that I've got that big, beautiful new 2021 trunk, which I love. But I bought some eggs. Now, I remember vividly in 2020, I was paying 99 cents a dozen for eggs. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. I bought eggs two days ago and I paid $3.79 a dozen. Now, I am not a whiz at math or calculus or trigonometry or geometry or any of those math things. But if I subtract 99 cents from $3.79 and I do all the math, that's not three or four percent inflation. That's about more than three and a half times the price. So that's a 350 percent increase in the price of eggs. And those of you that grocery shop, you know what I'm talking about. You're experiencing this. And this is, and we talked about in the last, last month's video about how uh, uh, inflation is cumulative. That when they say 8%, they mean 8% annualized for that year. But that just tacks on to the inflation from the previous year. So anyway, I bought gas Sunday before I met uh, Robert and Don for breakfast at uh, Einstein's. I stopped and got gas. So I paid $3.39 
per gallon for 87 octane on Sunday. And when I filled my motorcycle up, I track my mileage using a, an app called Fuely. And so I can go back and see what I paid. And it's been less than a month ago that I filled up. It's been actually about two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, I paid $275. So in the last two weeks, it went from 275 up to 339. That's a 62%, oh, sorry, 62 cent increase in the last two weeks. And that's a 23% increase. Now in 2020, I remember vividly, I was paying a dollar sixty-nine per gallon for 87 octane here in the Dallas, Texas area. So prices are just out of control. Now, this is all part of the elites and the government. I say government is really the elites, but the government's plan. They love these high gas prices because they think if gas prices get high enough, you will be forced to buy an electric vehicle. Uh, it's all part of this environmental religion that I talked about 30 days ago, whether you agree or not. It's a, it exists. It is a religion. It makes absolutely no scientific sense. There is no evidence anywhere that this electrification movement is doing anything to improve the environment. There's no evidence of that. You know, the idea is if I'm too broke to pay for gas to fill up my car, I'm going to go buy an $80,000 electric vehicle. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Not many people, and people are rejecting this idea. People reject the idea of the range anxiety. They reject the idea of these things being dangerous because they catch on fire and they're hard. The fires are hard to put out. These lithium batteries are dangerous. And how do you dispose of these lithium batteries? That's a whole different discussion we're not going to get into tonight, even though I already have. But we're we're all paying this environmental religion tax. Now, I had somebody send me a comment about inflation. And, you know, I talked about it being cumulative. And I talked about government spending. I talked about, you know, how uh, printing of money is causing inflation. But somebody posted a message or sent me a message talk talking about corporate greed, that this is the reason for inflation. I hear politicians say this. Usually they're politicians on one particular side of the aisle. They say those greedy grocery stores are jacking up prices and those gas stations are jacking up prices and it's corporate greed. And, you know, to be fair, there may be some cases of corporate greed coming into play. There might be some company, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, when gas prices go up, Federal Express and UPS, they'll use that as, and they may have to increase their shipping prices to cover the additional cost of fuel. Same with airlines. The problem is when fuel prices or if fuel prices drop, they don't ever lower their price. Now that could be a case where you talk about corporate greed. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't consider myself to be greedy. I raised my prices this year. And I had not raised the prices in several years, but I had to raise the prices. Now you say, well, am I, so am I greedy? Are you saying that I'm just a, 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 a robber baron? I'm one of these guys that's, uh, you know, a greedy capitalist? Well, let me tell you what's happened to my insurance rates. My insurance rates have more than doubled in the last year. My homeowner's insurance doubled. My car insurance almost doubled. And if you live in California or Florida, forget it. Your insurance rates are in, in, unreal. And in some states, insurance companies aren't even going to be writing car insurance anymore. That's why I had to raise my prices. Everything I have around here, my utilities are going up, our natural gas prices are going up. Even though the price of natural gas is dropping, at the pump or at the head, but for some reason my natural gas costs are going up. It's costing me now, in the winter time, I was paying two to three hundred dollars a month for my heating bill, whereas two years ago I was paying about a hundred to a hundred and ten dollars a month in the winter months. And we had a mild winter this year. So 
If you wonder why I've had to raise my prices, trust me, it's not greed. Even the price increase, I'm not making as much money as I was three years ago. Okay. There's my rant. My other rant I'm going to talk about next month. I'm going to save it. I've, I've given you too much. I've given you too much. I've spoiled you. You can't have more rant this month. But next month, I am going to talk about your home being a great investment because I, I ain't buying that. I've had this house for 20 years and I'm going to tell you why. I don't think this home is a great investment. So I'm going to save that till next month. Okay. Now, when we come back, I'm going to get your comments. I'm going to read through them and I'm going to respond to them, answer them if necessary. And uh, we'll be right back. Everybody, welcome back to Crown of Comments, March 2024. I'm Cruise Man, and now it's time for me to read through some of your comments. And I will respond and answer any questions if there are any questions here. Now, the first, and these are not in any particular order. I'm just taking them, you know, as they came up on the screen. I picked out several. So this is Jimmy something. So Jimmy, uh, he says, thank, and this is on my interview with Kristen and Eddie Skaggs with. Uh, bon Armor. Thanks for another great interview, Cruise Man. I'll definitely look into this product. Okay, Jimmy, I think you should. They're excellent products. I think you'll be very, very happy with them. I don't hear any complaints from anybody. This is from American Veteran. He says, dude, you talk way too much. It's an oiling issue as the lifters on the right side drain with gravity. Center stand unless you start unless you're stopping and going that day. This was on a video I did a while back talking about the little engine ticking noise. And in that video, I asked everybody, do you keep your bike on the center stand or the side stand when you park it at night? And do you have the ticking sound? And I've also done some tests myself. And American veteran, I'm sorry to tell you that my research, as crude as it was and unscientific as it was, just as many people that put their bike on the center stand had the ticking issue as on the side stand. It's a great theory, but I don't think it holds water. I've also done it on my bike. I've put it on the center stand, and I've done some tests, and I can't tell the difference. It still has that little ticking. When the engine's cold, you hear a little ticking on the right side of the engine. So what do you think? Put it in the comments down below. What has your experience been? Do you get the little ticking noise on your 2018 or plus Goldwing on the right side of the engine when the engine's cold or not? Okay, this is from What's Up. And this is on my interview with Kristen and Eddie. And they said, thanks for this. I'm seriously considered placing an order. I'll look through their lineup. My wife and I always ride protected, but would also like to be comfortable. Often the two don't go hand in hand. Bond armor looks like a great option. Yes. Their gear is very comfortable. I love this new Level 2 armor. It is not only comfortable, but I have proven twice now that it's effective. It really does reduce the effects of an impact. This is on my review of the Pathfinder LED trunk lid spoiler. This is from Jerry. He said, Cruise Man, does Pathfinder sell a similar light for the non-tour Goldwing with just a rack mount on the non-tour, with just a rack mounted on the non-tour? And the answer to my knowledge is no, they do not, unfortunately. I wish they just sold, even if you didn't have a rack, I wish they sold a light for the non-tour, but they don't. And it could, be, it could be because there's not as many bagger models sold as there are tour models. I wish I had asked Kyle Downey that question when I interviewed him. Maybe I'll send him an email and ask him, what, how many baggers do they sell compared to tour models? That'd be interesting to know. Uh, Super Roger, maybe he'll watch this video and he'll put a comment in down below. This is on the video I did about the Honda service manual. Uh, Super Roger says, I like to do as much maintenance on my bike as I can. The frustration I have is the poor directions included 
I always prefer watching someone perform the installation and then someone trying to explain how to get it on a piece of paper. Cruise Man videos do exactly that. I have 10-inch high stack of manuals for various vehicles I've owned, but never use them because YouTube and guys like Cruise Man give me what I need. And he goes on to, thank you very much, Super Rogers. Appreciate it. Glad you enjoy the videos. Okay. Let's go down to Liz Darrell. And this is my video I did on the 13 things that Honda needs to change on the Honda Goldwing. It's hard for me to read this little thumbnail. <laughs> Need to change those thumbnails. TPMS, okay, this is interesting. TPMS should give you its readings without having to first drive the bike. Don't know about everyone else, but I'd like to know why my tire pressure is, or I'd like to know what my tire pressure is before I take off. I will talk about this in the next video that I'm putting out. The reason your TPMS system does not engage, I think you have to get up to 10 or 16 miles an hour before it kicks in. So in other words, you can't just walk out to your bike and see what your tire pressure is. You have to be rolling and moving before you see it. The reason Honda did that is I'm sure it's some sort of centrifugal force thing inside the sensor that the battery does not kick on until... Uh, it's moving and in motion for a period of time. And the reason they do that is to save battery life, would be my guess. Because the batteries on the TPMS sensors inside your wheel are not replaceable. You can't replace them. And, they're, and you have to replace the entire sensor, and they're very expensive. It costs you three or $400 to replace your TPMS sensor. So I'm sure Honda was trying to do you a solid by not using up the battery. This is from uh, Bob, Bob won golf On my oil change video I did recently, kind of a little, uh, uh, my attempt at cinematic video, I guess. I watched this video and I don't even own a Goldwing. Well, thank you, Bob. Great. Oh, man, I love it when non-Goldwing owners watch my videos. Thank you. This is about my oil change video. He said, this is almost an art film. The music, lighting, and rhythmic motion was mesmerizing. Nicely done. Well, thank you, Thomerson. That makes me feel good. Now I will bore you with more of these cinematic and rhythmic motion videos. I'm trying to kind of stretch my, my cinematography legs here as much as I can. Okay, this is from Loom... Somebody out there that's a real video guy is laughing his ass off at that right now. Uh, Loom, I don't know what it is. My wife is on her third Ember mug, heated coffee mug. She swears by it. This is on my oil change video. I think I just, in the video, you could see I'm using an Ember mug. I love that mug, by the way. It was a gift from my brother. One of the best Christmas gifts I've ever gotten because it has a, a heating element in the bottom and it's rechargeable, and it keeps your coffee hot, and it'll keep it hot for almost two hours. So I use it every morning. I love it. If you're interested in an Ember mug, I'll put a link in the description of this video. On You can get them on Amazon, and they're it's one of the best things you'll ever have. Okay, if you like hot coffee or hot tea. Okay, this is from Kenneth Jackson. This is also on the oil change video. When I change my oil, it involves the oil filter, DCT filter, and I change the final drive oil as well every 3,000 miles. Okay, I don't. I change my oil and filter about every 3,500 miles, 3,000 to 4,000 miles. If I'm getting ready to take a trip, be on the road for a while, I'll do it at 3,000, but otherwise I'll go 3,500 miles. And I do the DCT filter every other oil change. So, and I keep track in my spreadsheet, which you have access to if you have my maintenance videos. Uh, I keep track, so I know when I did my last oil change. And if uh, every other one, I change the DCT filter. And every other one, I do the final drive oil. Now, you don't really have to do the final drive oil. I'd say every 10 or 12,000 miles. But I go ahead and do it anyway, because like, my friend told me one time, you're never going to hurt an engine or any part with fresh oil. This is from Adventure, and this is on the video I did where I was swapping out the trunk of my 2018 Goldwing with a 2021 trunk. And he says, hi, great video. Can the trunk handle both 
this light and the trunk, he said rake, I think he meant rack. Sorry, I got a text from my brother, but I'll ignore it. I better turn off my notifications, actually. So he's basically saying, can you put the, the uh, Pathfinder spoiler trunk light on with a luggage rack? And the answer is no, it will not fit. That luggage rack fits very, very low to the trunk lid. I don't know. I think Honda may make a light. I think Pathfinder may even make a light that goes underneath the trunk lid. But this spoiler and light will not. So you need to look on Pathfinder LED's website. Uh, now, there is a trunk light from Show Chrome, the new GT Marvel trunk light, that will fit because it goes on the back of the trunk. And that would fit along with a trunk rack or a luggage rack. Okay, this is from Mark. Uh, this is on my 60,000 subscriber video. I love the podcast and it looks great, but I normally listen to my podcasts while I'm working on my bike, doing stuff around the house or at the gym. I'm hoping to get an audio-only version on Apple Podcasts. Keep up the great content. I don't know if I'm on Apple Podcasts, but I am on Spotify. So you can find Garage Talk on Spotify. I'm researching how to get that over to the Apple Podcasts and Google and some of the other networks. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm really new at this. So, okay, this is from Matt. With my interview with Kyle at Southern Honda Power Sports, he said, Wow, I'm impressed. Thanks, Cruiseman, for putting Kyle on and talk about his dealership. I called yesterday and spoke to a salesperson, Doug, whom I will be purchasing my new Goldwing trike from. Kyle did say uh, that he lists the prices on his website, but I don't find it anywhere. If anyone knows, please let me know. They may not put the price of trikes on there. I know they do have some of their bikes, for sure. Uh, thanks again, Cruise Man. I told Doug I found their dealership through your podcast. Thank you, Matt. That, it really does help. That will help us get more people on the show. This is from Tin Wingman. Uh, this is another on the video I did for the Southern Power Sports. Have bought three motorcycles from Southern and had at one time a working relationship with them. When I was district director for the former, former GWRRA and did the Tennessee yearly rally at the Camp Jordan. They're a great dealership and all fantastic folks. I was in the market. If I was in the market, this is the only place I would consider. Thanks for all they do. I hear nothing but good things pretty much across the board from Southern Honda. Most people have had a really good experience with them. F6B Adventures, uh, this is Adden. He had breakfast with us a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, make sure you check out F6B Adventures. And he asked the question about my Southern Honda interview with Kyle. What made you choose this place? Well, uh, Adden, it's because... I have a friend in North Carolina who has an airbag gold wing, and we were on the phone talking one night, and I mentioned to him I was looking for people to host on the podcast, and he recommended that I have Kyle on. He thought it'd be a good, uh, he'd be a good person to interview. So he had done business with Southern Honda several times, and so he kind of connected us. He put us together. That's... So I didn't really choose them as much as they kind of chose me, I guess. But that's how it all came together. Rick Thompson said on the same video, said, Cruise Man, where can I get a hat and shirt like the one you're wearing in this video, which is the same hat and shirt that I'm wearing right now. And you can get these on shop.cruisemansgarage.com, which is my merchandise site. And don't forget, there's a 10% coupon right now if you use 60k subs as your coupon code. You can save 10%. So that's a little plug I put in there. Uh, this is from David. Brown. This is the last comment, by the way. Sorry, this is a long show tonight. Uh, this is another from Southern Honda. It says, Southern Honda is a great dealership. I purchased from them back in 2018. Traveled from Phoenix, Arizona 
The process was easy, and the sales group kept me informed. They had the inventory and the prices saved me thousands, even with the cost of traveling to pick it up. See, that's the thing. If you get enough of a discount, it'll pay you to fly out there or drive out there and ride the bike home. What better way to get familiar with your brand new Goldwing than to put a thousand or two thousand miles on it on a road trip? Be a great trip. Okay, that's it for the comments. That's it for Crown and Comments March 2024. I'm going to finish this glass of Crown. I'd better get some food in my stomach or I'm going to get even worse than I am right now. I'm going to get abusive here in a minute. So um, thanks for joining me. If you like, again, I'm going to say it again. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share it with your friends. I know it sounds repetitive and redundant. Thanks for joining me. And remember what I always say. Two things now. Ride off and ride safe. And you don't get old no, I, I screwed up. I've had too much to drink. You don't quit riding motorcycles when you get old. You get old when you quit riding motorcycles. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next month on Cram and Comments.